Hello, it's day seven of industrial nationalism. Today's topic is the Herero and Nama people of Southwest Africa and their fight against Germany. And the overarching theme of this last part of the unit is unfortunately genocide. Genocide ha comes from the word genus, um, kind of like family, and side it sounds familiar, kind of like homicide, so it has to do with killing um, or murder. So genocide is the killing or murder of a family of people, a race, a nationality, a religion that's been done on purpose in some kind of systematic way. Let's do a little orientation in space and time so we know where and what and who we're talking about. Germany, up here in Europe, claimed the colony of Southwest Africa down here at the southern tip of Africa. We have already talked about how Britain claimed uh, Zululand. We talked about how Belgium claimed the Congo. Germany, at the uh, Berlin Conference, claimed Southwest Africa, among a few other places. Um, Southwest Africa already had two nations. Um, and and several other smaller groups, but two major nations living there, the Herero and the, the Herero Republic was in the north, and the Namakwa, the Nama people, lived in the south. So at first, Germans settled here in the middle um, between these two groups of people, and the landscape looks something like this in much of this region of the world. It's um, kind of chaparral and, and scrub brush in some areas, and then in the inland areas, it is a giant dry desert. The first question is, of course, how did fighting break out between German and Herero people? So Germans who arrived in Southwest Africa claimed and believed that the land was empty. However, the Herero people historically were cattle herders. They were grazing their cattle on the land. It was far from empty, however, as pasturage, as a place for the cows to eat, and because it's so dry, the Herero needed large areas to uh, pasture their cattle to help the cattle graze. And so any given place may look empty at one time, but it just means that the cattle have been herded somewhere else temporarily. At first, the Herero and the Nama tolerated the Germans. They allowed them to be there kind of as intermediaries. The, the Herero and the Nama historically didn't always get along. So having a different group of people living in the middle seemed like a good idea, at least in the short term. However, quickly, Thousands of German settlers arrived wanting to set up farms. Those settlers started to claim the very best land and claim water sources as their private property. This leads to conflict. I want to point out before we continue with the narrative that the Herero and Nama people, you want to imagine them looking more like these individuals over here on the right. They wore clothing um, in the same styles as Europeans at the time. Um, picture here, this is some Herero uh, soldiers running, retreating, I think. These two are running away, this guy's shooting. They're dressed in the same kinds of clothes as the Germans. They have the same guns as the Germans, etc. Just want to make sure that you understand that. Also, this is the particular kind of cattle that uh, the Herero grazed here. They're called Ancole cattle. Um, they're pretty hardy. They're kind of similar to like Texas Longhorns are the kind of cows that live in Northern Mexico, Southern Texas. They're well suited to desert life. So what happens? Well, the Germans offer the Herero treaties. Um, they, they try to have the Herero sign treaties, giving up their land and, and voluntarily moving out of the way of the German people. The Herero know their history. They know what happened to the people of the Congo and they do not agree to sign the treaties. Feel like this is suspicious. No, we don't agree to sell you any of our land. We don't agree to leave. You are going to leave. We're going to stay. Both sides, the German and the Herero, become increasingly suspicious of each other, and both sides prepare for a fight. This sort of like tug of war, back and forth, threat, game of chicken continues for a while. During this preparation for the fight, the Herero also know what happened to the Zulu about 20 years earlier. And so they get the best modern firearms and practice up so that they can defend themselves effectively. Meanwhile, the Germans are building railroads to try to get their resources from place to place efficiently. And then by 1903, a couple of things happen to start the fight. There's a cattle plague, first of all, um, kind of like a, a 
cow coronavirus that kills a lot of the cattle and it sort of hurts the Herrero economy. And then also in 1903, there's a disagreement over the sale of a goat. Some uh, Nama and some German people get into an argument, troops get involved, the Nama, two Nama guys get shot, then the Nama retaliated, then some German people get shot, and then all, all hell breaks loose. The settlers demand, uh, demand revenge, the Herrero defend themselves, and we're off. German propaganda at the time, which is what this picture is down here, claims in the newspaper that 44 German women and children, civilians were killed. It claims that 26 German soldiers were killed. Those things are not true. Um, in reality, three Germans were killed um, and two Nama were killed in this conflict over the sale of a goat, but it gets blown out of proportion. The newspapers report it as if the Herero are marauding through uh, German towns, stabbing innocent German women, and um, the war starts. What tactics did the German military use against Herero and Nama civilians? So before we deal with this quote, I want to point out that the Herero were more than capable of defending themselves, and Herero soldiers were really good at fighting. They learned the lessons that they saw what happened in the Congo, they saw what happened to the Zulu, and they were going to fight the Germans on the Germans' own terms. The Herero tr soldiers uh, fight hard. They see the Germans preparing. They're solid fighters. They use good strategies. And significantly, the Herero and the Nama avoid attacking German civilians. German propaganda aside. The German military, though, does not have such mercy for Herero civilians, women, children, non-combatants. So they have this quote from a German general, and he says, the Herero people will have to leave the country. If the people refuse, I will force them with cannons to do so. Within the German boundaries, every Herero, with or without firearms, with or without cattle, will be shot. I won't accommodate women and children anymore. I shall drive them back to their people, or I shall give the order to shoot at them. The German retaliation against the Herrero people was total war. In today's terms, this is total war, war against every single person of the nation, whether or not they ho were holding what firearms, whether or not they were fighters, soldiers, etc. It says here, with or without firearms, with or without cattle, women, children, etc. So you could have a group of women herding cattle, and they would be a, a seen as combatants equal to soldiers with guns. Part of this is done because the German uh, people and the German military felt that it would be humiliating uh, to lose against African people, and so they needed to sort of define them all together as combatants. The tactics used were pretty vile. The German military claimed all of the wells and water supplies in the country. They drove with their military, with their cannons, with their guns, just like this threat says. They drove all the Herero um, and Nama people, soldiers, civilians, everyone, out into the great Kalahari Desert. Once they and their cattle, who came with them in most cases, were out there and the Germans controlled all of the water holes, all of the wells, um, the Herero and Nama people were prevented from getting clean water. One way they did this, um, some water supplies, some wells were guarded 24 seven and anyone who came to get water was shot. And other water supplies like this watering hole were simply poisoned. Um, that way the water was undrinkable for cattle, undrinkable for humans, and eventually uh, without shelter, without food and without water, the Herero and Nama people would surrender. So you have over the period of, period of a few months, you have civilians like this driven out into the desert. And after a few months, this is the result. Obviously, this is not the same people. These women don't turn into these men, but I don't have a picture of the same exact people before and after. 
the reason I have these two pictures is to compare sort of the health and quality of life of individuals before and after. This is not what the Herero and Nama people looked like before the Germans stripped them of their homes and forced them to live in the desert without shelter, food, or water for months at a time. This photo here is a German patrol. The patrols used actually camels. Um, that way they wouldn't be affected by the poisoned water holes um, because camels don't need to drink very often so they could go out on patrol and not worry about the contaminated drinking water. Eventually, the starving, suffering survivors, like these men here, crawled their way out of the desert um, and begged for mercy, surrendering to the German troops. And the Germans rounded them up and put them in prison. This brings us to our last question that the German government finally has called a Volkermord or genocide. The question is, how did the genocide happen so fast? Number one, the German government and the German military decide they cannot negotiate with the Herero and Nama people because it would legitimize, legitimize them as honorable enemies. The Herero, the Nama, they're Black Africans, and the German government believes that they cannot negotiate with surrendering Black Africans because those Black Africans are not honorable enemies by definition. So they, they effectively don't deserve the respect of being human beings. As the survivors come in from the desert, they are rounded up and transported on trains. As you can see, here's a photo of one of those trains, transported on trains to camps. These prison camps, as they're first called, um, and in, in retrospect, they're called extermination camps, but at the time they were called prison camps or concentration camps. They were used to concentrate the prisoners. Here is a photo. This is Shark Island. It is off the coast of Southwest Africa, um, out into the Atlantic Ocean. It's called Shark Island because there's sharks in the water. And it's called Shark Island Extermination Camp in this caption. It was called Shark Island Camp at the time. Shark Island had no services, it had no shelters, it had no resources, it had no drinking water, it had no plumbing, no toilets, none of that. People were held as prisoner there, sort of indefinitely. Here's a photo from inside the camp. People were given food, but no way to cook it. Um, raw rice, but no place to boil water to cook it in. Um, a, a few blankets, but no real tents, no real homes, no real buildings, no shelters from the wind, from the weather, from the sun. Disease broke out quickly, and the German military more or less just let it take its toll. Rape of the prisoners was pretty common, especially for women prisoners who might submit to such violence in order to secure better food, maybe better treatment for their families. Some people even bribed the guards um, with the promise of becoming their personal slave, effectively selling themselves into slavery to get out of the hell that is Shark Island. Basically, most people died very quickly. Within a few months, between 1905 and 1906, 80% of the Herero people were dead. 80% of an entire nation of people were dead and gone forever. And the indignity went further. The dead, when they passed, were collected and their skulls were removed from their body and collected to be used as evidence for uh, pseudoscientific racist research. To use racist, to come up with racist theories to justify the war, to justify colonization, to justify stealing property from African people. You have here photographic evidence. This is a decapitated head. And here you have some German soldiers putting decapitated and, uh, well, actually skulls into a box to be shipped back to Europe to be given to scientists and museums and government officials for study so that they could prove and justify their actions. That completes our questions for today. 
the follow-up uh, interpretation practice that you should do is uh, the question, how was the genocide of the Herero and Nama peoples caused by a combination of economic and nationalist motives?